five pieces of uh, wild rhino stone glued together with impa super glue that goes into this Daniel and Nanocube small aquarium that I'm going to build, I'm going to scape for CRS, crystal red shrimp. So exciting. Welcome to the beautiful world of aquascaping. Why did I put it the other way around in? <laughs> because this, this ladies and gentlemen should go in like that. Good thing that I prepare all the hardscape in advance because it makes my life easier for maintenance. Actually, I'm not maintaining the aquariums, but I have a clue of how to work because if you would want to glue this together in a small tank, inside the tank, it's impossible. The angle is very important. You've got a main stone at the top, the one that I'm holding. You've got like a triangle shape that goes from the left to the golden ratio point, which is the tip, the top of the main rock, and then down on the right side. The V shape on the other hand is like that. I'm not going to use many plants in it because I want to have the shrimps visible. So let me see how can I like leave it there and then glue it on a bottom plate somehow. And that bottom plate is going to hold the whole structure in it. And I couldn't do it outside the tank. The Simper Super Glue is very strong and it will heal in a couple of minutes. I'm trying to use a lot of glue because I want the support to be strong, just like your support with this channel. That is strong as well, thank you for that. You don't have to do this at home. You don't have to glue the, the stones. If you find the proper stones that would support themselves, which are like uh, bulkier at the bottom and they have the tips uh, which you like, you can use just three stones. And the rule of odd numbers is very important in an aquarium because it will help you with the balance of the aquarium. If you have an even number of hardscape elements, of points of interest, it would look somewhat artificial or too balanced, okay? So this is why we are always using the uh, odd number of, of hardscape elements. Also what I did, you see in the background that I'm using the white foil right now, this Daniel and Nano Cube comes with the black foil inside. And uh, I think that uh, both the black and the white background are okay. So what's the difference between the two? If you have the white background, you have a better perspective, which means that you will open the aquarium towards the horizon a lot more. So it will add a lot of depth to the aquarium. It will look uh, cleaner because of the white. It will look more minimalist because of the white. The advantage of the black background, however, is that you will have a lot of contrast. So if you want the fish colors to pop, if you want the green of the plants to pop, if you want something with a lot of contrast, you should keep the, uh, the black background. I've been working on this hardscape for about an hour or so together with the preparation so it doesn't take a lot of time. The more you scape, the more uh, experience you will become with your layout composition skills and the whole thing will become a routine and you will be able to create beautiful aquariums on the go basically. So I, I, you know, I encourage everybody to rescape their tanks as many times as possible to gain as much experience as they can. I'm not saying not to enjoy the aquariums, that's, that's okay, and I'm enjoying the aquariums for a long time, but like after six months, one year, maybe it's time to do something new. And the, the, the years you spent in the hobby, uh, the more experience you gained, the better aquariums, the more beautiful aquariums you will build. This aquarium has the uh, front edges rounded, as you can see on this picture. Some people like this because you don't see any glue they come with a top, so you can actually put a top on it if you're afraid to lose your fish due to jumping. We found that, that fish do not jump if they have a lot of good filtration, which is the single most important thing in aquascaping. So I encourage everybody to spend on filtration, to think about filtration, to get an external filter if you can. There are dentalist sets that come with an internal filter that has some biological filter media in it, but we changed it in this case for an Eheim external filter. I think it is the experience, the small experience filter that we have underneath this one, which is uh, in my humble opinion, the, the quietest filter around us. A customer came in with an Eheim filter that he actually bought 25 years ago. Can you imagine that? 
and it was in mint condition. He didn't even change the ceiling rings in, on it, and and it was start to started to leak, and he decided to buy a new experience filter instead. Why do you filter an aquarium? We have tutorials about that. You want to get rid of an, uh, of a thing called ammonia, which is a result of organic decomposition inside the water, and ammonia is toxic to fish in the long term or in the short term as well, and it causes algae. So we don't want to have that in the aquarium. Let me see what I did. As you can see, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and the soil and the plants will cover the glue. I will start cleaning the plants before I introduce the soil because I'm waiting for the guys to bring me the soil. And I'm using three types of plants in two types of uh, packaging. The first one is the Eleocaris acicularis, which is the bigger hair grass. And that guy will be in the background overhanging the rocks. How many plants do you want to use? Well, the rule of thumb is to use one palm size area for one pot, but I'm using a lot more. I want to plant heavily from day one so that uh, the biological ecosystem is established. The second thing is Cryptocorini parva, one of my favorite plants. With the two pots, I'm going to actually add a lot of detail to the midground of this aquarium at the bottom of those rocks. Micranthemum calicicoides cuba. It was called uh, Hemianthus calicicoides cuba. This comes from Stoffels. And then I'm going to show you how the tropical one looks like. Actually, this is the same plant. It looks a little bit different. This is more leggy and lighter. This is darker, but in the end, both are gonna look perfectly the same. This plant needs carbon dioxide injection for photosynthesis. And we light all aquariums with a high light. We have a Chihiro's light above this tank. This is the Anubias mini coin that we took out from the 650. And this is how you buy it uh, when you get it in a, in a lab plant version. So let's just start with the Power Sand Advance. This is going to help with the filtration. It has a small grain size. It has some pebbles in it, which are very porous in material. So they can, uh, they can help with the oxygenation of the soil, which is good for the beneficial bacteria that will decompose the organics. Okay, so this is the Tropica plant care soil, the powder version. And being a small aquarium and such, I wanted to use this at the bottom. I'm going to apply it at the front first. How much do you want to use of this? You can use at least three or four centimeters. You see how much soil I apply? I think I will put the whole thing in. There. I only used one three liter bag of this and I don't actually need more. And it, it is perfectly okay for this 20 liter small aquarium. You ideally want to raise the soil a little bit towards the back. Let's see what we do with the epiphytes first. The Sanobias mini coin is a very delicate small plant. It, it has a perfect roundish leaf structure. I love how it looks and it will look perfect in the cracks uh, of these uh, rocks. Good thing with small aquariums is that uh, you can have a tighter budget. You don't have to spend so much on plants. This is already way too much for a normal tank. We're using it for, for YouTube purposes and want it to, to look as final as possible about three weeks after setup. At home, you don't have to do that. I'm preferring the, uh, the mid-size ADA tweezers. Those are my go-to tweezers for 99% of the cases and why it is important to use tweezers that look like this. It's important because the tip is narrow. So when you plant something, when you release, the tweezer will come out as the soil grabs on to the plant. The tweezer can come out without pulling the plant out. I'm actually not planting all the way next to the front glass because that will look ugly. So I'm just leaving a couple of millimeters. As you can see, now I'm releasing, jiggling a bit, and then it stays in. The only trick with Cuba is that you should have a lot of CO2 and light, and maybe not so warm water. This Cuba carpet also needs a lot of trimming. 
If you don't trim the cuba, it will just root up and it will float because it has such a delicate root structure. So I recommend to trim it regularly to keep it nice and low. And if you do that, you have the best looking plant. This is actually the smallest leafed plant in the uh, freshwater aquarium hobby. It's perfect for a high-tech, CO2-injected nano aquarium. So you don't see the bottom plate, the bottom rock anymore. It's way down below the uh, soil. These plant roots like to stay in a clay-based soil. That doesn't mean that you cannot plant them in an in inert substrate like pebbles or sand, but they would just not spread as quickly as in clay-based soil. So we prefer to use them in, in clay-based soil. And sometimes when you just need patches in the foreground, you can just use them in, in, in other types of inert substrates. The sounds that you hear are sounds of green aqua during the day. Customers are coming in and out. The green aqua is having customers from all over Europe because we're shipping to most European countries, but we are having visitors from all over the world. Last week I had two guys from South Korea actually. They have a beautiful small new shop. Shout out to them. Crypts will grow well without a lot of light. I'm using the big tweezer again to put this just behind it. I have like a bigger bush of crypts in here. So this is the ADA small pro tweezers. You can see that I can reach in with it better in this spot, see? I can plant better here. Obviously you don't need as many tools when you start aquascaping, you just need one good tweezers. Lunch. Lunch? I'm almost done, Aaron. What lunch? Aaron always starts the lunch mantra at uh, 11.45. I can go without eating 10, 12 hours, not a problem during the day. I'm not saying I'm not gonna get hungry, I'm going to get hungry, but if I do, I'm okay. <laughs> Is that a good thing? Any doctors in the audience? <laughs> please diagnose me. <laughs> no, please don't. I'm a bit hypochondric. <laughs> not much, just a bit. We shouldn't be afraid of stuff. I hope this Cuba will survive. We might have some issues at the beginning with it, but then we will prevail. Okay, so hint, if you don't see a cinematic video on a tank, we didn't prevail. <laughs>Okay, I'm not sure that anything will survive in there except some Anubias, perhaps. I can plant this guy without any questions here. The last thing that I need to do is to use the hair grass and then start to push it in the background. It just, just form like a curtain. It will develop runners and it will try to overtake the whole background and I will keep it in the back. I will not let it run everywhere. This was quite a pleasant build. I started making it at uh, probably 9.30 and now it's 12. So in two and a half hours I was ready with it. All that remains to be done now is to introduce the crystal red shrimp, otherwise known as CRS shrimp. So I'm so looking forward to fill this up with water, bring it to, the, to its own place and don't go anywhere because you're gonna see how this whole thing looks in probably three weeks. We will see you next time. Bye bye. Let us know what you thought in the comments.